In the last video, I went over how this right angle pattern could be difficult for some players to play because of how there are two acceleration components on the same object. We assume that the axes for this pattern go something like this. We have x going in one direction and y going in the other direction, perpendicular to each other. And so there's one acceleration component in the x plane and one acceleration component in the y plane. OK, now let's take a look at this pattern slightly differently. What if I were to do something like this, for instance, and I'll also flip it. So what do we have here? We have constant x momentum and then y going upwards and then straight back downwards. So it's just like the first triangle we saw in the other video, but it's still a right angle triangle, so it must be still just as hard to play. So what's with that? This was actually due to a little inconsistency on my end with how I orientated the axes. In the first triangle we looked at, I had 1 3, the line between 1 3, parallel with the x-axis. This was so that the velocity between 1 2 and 2 3 was constant in the x-axis. But then when I went on to the example map, and also the right angle triangle case, I had the line 1, 2 parallel of the y-axis. If I was to mimic that for the first triangle we had, 1, 2 would be parallel of the y-axis, so this axis would be slightly rotated clockwise a little bit so that it would be parallel, which is a different orientation to how I initially had it. We could still take something from this though, but it would be much better if we had some consistency in this. We can still take something from this though, and let's take a closer look at what we can learn. Let's assume that the line 1, 2 and the line 2, 3 are the same length, and that these two lines create a right angle. Let's draw a line between 1 and 3, and let's just say it has a length of 2 all across. Half of 2 is 1, obviously. So this length here is 1. Using Pythagoras' theorem, we can then work out that these two sides must have a length of root 2 each, and that this length here is 1. What we could look at here is the ratio between this line and this line, i.e. the ratio between the direction you are accelerating in and the direction you have constant velocity in. So in this case, it's 1 to 1. If we do the acceleration divided by the velocity, it's 1 divided by 1, which is equal to 1. So the AV ratio of the right angle triangle case is just 1. And it could be that this AV ratio is what determines how difficult an angle is to play. So let's take a look at another example and have a look at that AV ratio. We have a sharper angle here for the triangle, and I've worked out the numbers in advance to speed things up a bit, but we have the same principle as last time. We have the direction you're accelerating in, and we have the direction where you have constant velocity. So if we do the same sum as last time, we have acceleration divided by velocity, which is 2 divided by 1, which is 2. So the AV ratio in this case for a sharper angle is higher than what we had for the right angle. And basically what this tells us is the sharper the angle, the easier it is to hit. So I can show this by moving 3 around. If I move 3 in this direction, then the angle is going to get sharper and the acceleration direction is going to get much larger compared to the constant velocity direction and so the AV ratio is going to get larger and larger until it gets to this point where they're pretty much overlapping each other and the AV ratio goes towards infinity. And likewise in the opposite direction the angle is going to get much greater and so the AV ratio is going to get much much smaller until it reaches this point where they're opposite to each other and so the AV ratio goes to zero. Let's take a look at how this affects difficulty. I'm going to have the x axis parallel to the 1, 2 line. 
we've already established that a pattern like this where it goes back onto each other is easy to hit because you have one acceleration component to stop on two and so your tendency to move back in this direction is great. Now if I move three down here we still have a sharp angle and the AV ratio is still really large but you still have a small acceleration component going downwards. There are still two acceleration components but the acceleration going this way in the X direction is much greater than that in the Y direction. It's almost negligible. The fact that the acceleration in the X direction is much greater than the Y is what makes this pattern so easy to hit. If I was to continue moving free in this direction then the angle is going to get shallower, the AV ratio is going to get smaller, the difference in the acceleration in the X direction and the Y direction is also going to get smaller and so the angle gets harder and harder to play until it reaches the right angle case where the acceleration in the X direction and the Y direction are pretty much equal. And then when you go beyond that we now introduce acceleration back in this direction which is particularly tricky to play as we established in the last video and so angles beyond 90 degrees are even more difficult to play. For these next couple of points I'm going to go over fairly quickly because there's not too much to go over. This first point happens quite a lot in low level difficulties and for the example I'm going to use this map I'm fairly sure you recognize it. This is Konuko Tomei Elegy mapped by Awaken and this is Regras's normal difficulty. So what you might see often are these patterns where you have shallow angles, sometimes you might even get straight lines, and they happen fairly often. If I move through the map you'll probably see another one like here. Here's another example of it being fairly in straight lines and shallow angles. So we just went over that these patterns are fairly difficult to play, or they should be. So why do they appear in easies and normals and sometimes even hard? fairly often. And why are they easy to play? The first factor is that these maps usually have a low AR and with a low AR you have a lot of time to react to each note. If I play this back for you you'll be able to see how much time there is before you need to hit each note when they appear on screen. Now with a low AR you'll be able to see more notes on screen and you'll be able to see patterns way before you need to hit them. And when you can see patterns on screen it is much easier for a player to comprehend straight lines than it is to see more scrunched up patterns like stars for instance. The second factor is that low level difficulty maps are slow in comparison. For example this map is mostly in 1-1 one, one timing, yet all the notes are fairly close to each other and so you don't really need to move your cursor across the screen so much to hit each note. On high level difficulty maps like Insane and Extra, they're typically in 1-2 timing, so there's a higher note density and so you have to move your cursor around a lot more to hit each note. You're going to have to change your acceleration a lot more in a short amount of time, which is what makes those maps harder than easies and normals. It's also quite a bit different through sliders and streams as well with momentum, which probably will have its own video later on since there's quite a bit I could talk about on that. That's it for this video pretty much though, so I'll leave it there. The next video should be about angular momentum if I don't have to make another follow-up video. I got quite a bit of feedback on my last video which is great because these are only discussion videos and I could be wrong and the more feedback the better. I will continue to make videos though so I will see you then.